Welcome to Wing Clam Form. Uh, this is a presentation by me. I'm Joshua Howard. I'm going to be uh, teaching you about Wing Clam Form, which is just one aspect of wing design, but uh, it's a topic all of itself, so we're just going to go over that briefly. Okay, here's an overview of what we're going to be discussing. First, we're going to talk about what Wing Clam Form is. Um, and we're actually going to take a look at what it is not. This is so that we just have a clear idea of what we're discussing and um, understand the portion of the wing that we're talking about. Then we're going to go into into the different wing types, or a couple of the different wing types. We're going to look at straight, tapered, and also we're going to include elliptical wings in there as well because it's a type of a straight wing. Um, then we're going to look at swept wings. Uh, we're only going to cover forward, uh, excuse me, rearward swept wings today. There's also forward swept, but that's another complicated topic. Then we're going to take a look at delta wings, and we're also going to look at swing or variable geometry wings briefly. Okay, so what is wing plan form? Don't feel bad if you don't know the word. I actually didn't know it whenever I set out to do this presentation. I only knew the concept of what I wanted to study what I wanted to present as I did the research that's whenever I found this term and learned this term and realized that it it meant what I was trying to say so the basic definition is it's the shape of the wing when viewed from above looking down onto the wing so you can see the examples here you have a straight wing on the left elliptical tapered and swept back and delta all the way to the right uh, of course, a forward sweep would look like that swept back, only they would be pointing forward. And uh, there's there's a lot of different ways that you can shape a wing, and that is wing plan form. Okay, what wing plan form is not? We're not discussing today the shape of the airfoil. Uh, that's a different aspect. We're not talking about dihedral, how the shape of the wing is in relation to the airplane or the wing the wingspan so you can see an example of dihedral there it can go up or down uh, but that's not what we're discussing we're also not discussing angle of incidence the the angle of the wing cord line to the angle of the airplane from nose to tail um, that's not what we're discussing there there's these factors and other factors that go into the designing of a wing and exactly what its characteristics are going to be we're just going to do an overview of the plan form and the general characteristics associated with each type. Of course, they can be exaggerated or um, or lessened with some of these other design features, but they all still have a general uh, performance that you can expect out of them. Okay, so let's get started with uh, the straight wing. Straight wing is very simple. You can see it's straight. Imagine that goes out from the fuselage in a 90 degree angle um, and in the example here it has wing tips to make the ends rounded most of the most straight wing airplanes will have wing tips there's some some examples of ones that do not but most of them will what are the advantage of, advantages of a straight wing well it's going to have high lift at low speeds you'll notice agricultural airplanes usually have a straight wing um, they're also easy to build and easy to maintain. They're, it's very simple, you know, you're not fabricating complicated structures and things because it's straight. They don't have to have a curve. Um, they're strong, good, sh great strength because of their simplicity. <clears throat> it doesn't take a lot of effort to make a strong wing. Also, they maneuver really well. Um, basically, a lot of your aerodynamic, excuse me, your aerobatic airplanes are going to have a straight wing. So um, they're just very maneuverable. They're not as maneuverable as, say, a forward swept wing, but they do a fine job at maneuvering your aircraft. What are the disadvantages? Well, it creates a lot of drag, um, especially if you start to stack them on top of each other, right? Like the Wrights did, but remember it's also generating a lot of lift but it's going to create a lot of drag um, and it's going to be more at higher speeds so it's a low speed wing um, the Bell X1 
first airplane to break the sound barrier. Did in fact have a straight wing. Um, it might have had a slight taper to it, but either way, it wasn't really the best choice for a supersonic airplane. That's uh, probably part of why they struggled so much with getting through the sound barrier. But they eventually did do it. We'll discuss that a little more uh, in a couple slides. Tapered wings. Uh, it's a variation of the straight wing, and that's where you start tapering either the leading edge or the trailing edge or both. Um, again, here's an example of an aerobatic airplane. This one was actually uh, flown by Miss Patty Wagstaff for two of her championships and now resides in the National Air and Space Museum. But you can see it's a straight wing with a leading and trailing edge taper. The advantage of this is it's going to generate less drag for a given aspect ratio, uh, which if you don't know what that term means and how it affects the wing design you can do that study on your own it's a little outside of the scope that we're looking at here but um, also it generates a little bit greater lift um, especially you can go a little bit faster with this because it's going to have less drag um, some of the disadvantages well it's going to have less desirable stall characteristics a straight wing rectangular wing is going to stall at the at the root the wing root first and give you a bit of a warning and you'll still have good aileron control um, once you start adding a trailing edge taper especially the wing is going to start to stall more and more along the whole surface of the wing at one time um, so it's going to be a little less warning before you before you stall and a little less controllable also they're a little more complicated to build um, still fairly simple but they're not the easiest the last type of straight wing we're going to look at is elliptical, um, which just is just that. It's shaped ellipti elliptically, somewhat like an oval. The advantage of this is it is the most efficient of all the straight wings. Um, it, just, it has the highest speed capabilities. Um, it creates the least amount of drag. It's a, a good wing if you're if that's what you're looking for. It's also lighter in weight because you know you have two aircraft with a 20 foot wingspan. One of them has elliptical. Well, they've used less material in order to create that wing because they've got the edges kind of trimmed off. Disadvantages. Disadvantages. Well, in this case, somebody didn't quite understand what elliptical meant, so you get a strange aircraft like this. Uh, no, on a serious note, more difficult to construct. They are harder to construct, they're harder to make strong, they're less rigid than a typical straight wing. And also there's little to no warning of a stall in, in this type of aircraft. Not the type pictured, but an elliptical wing aircraft. Um, so that's not very good, depending on what you're trying to do. Alright, next we're going to move on to the swept back wing. Um, which is just that. This is what you see on all your airliners usually and they're going to be pointed towards the back and they'll usually have a taper to them. You can see it gets thinner as you get to the outside of the of the wing so they're usually going to be tapered but they're swept back. Um, advantages? Well it's got low drag at higher speeds. That's why your airliners can fly at 500 miles an hour and uh, not have too much trouble so they're going to be more efficient for those high speeds. They're not going to have all that drag. Uh, disadvantages, they have still more poor stall characteristics than others. This wing is going to stall at the wing edges before, or the wing tips before the wing root. So you're going to lose aileron control while you're flying through the air and before the stall fully sets in. Um, also, if it stalls at a low speed, it'll tend to pitch up. This has to do with where the center of lift is on the wing. It'll vary throughout the uh, envelope because of the fact that it is swept. And it's going to want to pitch up and nose up whenever you're flying at low speeds, um, which is usually whenever you're making an approach or you just took off. So if you stall during those times, the airplane's going to try and fly even higher angle of attacks which could result in 
and has resulted in many accidents. <clears throat> also, it needs a high angle of attack whenever you're flying approach speeds, especially in these big aircraft. So you're going to have a hard time seeing the runway while you're trying to land, um, re you know, relative to other aircraft. Of course, these have shorter noses because the engines aren't up front and all that, but uh, it is a factor. All right, next we're going to look at the delta wing. Um, your paper airplane is usually a delta wing, um, but we're going to go over this wing. Okay, advantages of this. It is a low drag at super and hypersonic speeds. I mentioned the Bell X-1. Uh, that created a lot of drag, and they had a very hard time getting to a sound barrier. Whenever they started using delta-shaped wings, um, like on this XB-70 Valkyrie, they were able to achieve not only supersonic speed, they were able to sustain it. Um, the Bell X-1 kind of just touched it and then, and then fell out. They were able to sustain it and then you actually were able to get hypersonic speeds um the x-15 was a had a wasn't quite as prominent of a delta shape but it did have a delta shape wing and it was able to achieve uh mach 6 at one point i believe it was and uh you have other airplanes that were designed and could sustain mach 3 for very long periods of time uh, without burning up all their fuel. still took a lot of fuel, of course, but they have a lot less drag, so it's a lot more efficient. Disadvantages. This wing needs very high speeds to even generate enough lift to fly. So that's going to make for long takeoff rolls, for long landing rolls. Um, it's definitely a factor whenever you're considering airport availability. Also, they're not very stable in flight, um, especially at high angle of attacks. They're just going to want to kind of wave all through the air. Um, they usually require an artificial means of stabilizing. So there's computers and gyros and all sorts of things in this aircraft that make it to where the pilot can actually control it. To him, it seems like a normal airplane, but in reality, there's a lot going on uh, behind the scenes that... I won't say he's unaware of, but he doesn't really experience. Okay, finally we're going to look at the swing wing. Um, here's one example, but it can be all sorts of different things. Advantages of swing wings and uh, variable geometry wings, well, it kind of goes without saying. You can have different types of wings on one platform. So in this case, you have a Tomcat. They wanted a high-speed airplane, and Navy wants a supersonic airplane. So what do they do? They build a Delta Wing aircraft. That makes sense, right? Oh yeah, but the Navy wants it also to land on an aircraft carrier, so uh, it needs to be able to fly at lower speeds. Oh, well, that's a little more difficult. So they made the wings where they actually fold out, and it can have almost a straight wing with a taper while it's landing and taking off, but it has a Delta Wing whenever it's actually out flying. So the advantages of this are that it it can be different things and this is just one example there's a lot more but it can be different things for you. Um, the disadvantages well here's another fine example. Disadvantages are however that it's um, It's very complicated to construct and engineer. It's going to have a lot of moving parts, and the more moving parts you have, the more likely it is to break. Um, it's going to have strength and structural issues as you're trying to construct it. Um, in order to make it strong enough, you have to. You have. It's just a lot of engineering to go into. Uh, so maybe you're like this pilot, and you have some questions. Um, hopefully, this isn't one of them. But if you have some questions, feel free to email me. Um, either at uh, Polk State or or my personal email address. Um, I'll provide those to you if you, if you would like. Uh, let's see. Mine is Howard JB21 at yahoo.com. Or if you'd like to email me from your Polk State address, it's jhoward11 at my.polk.edu. So uh, feel free to email me some questions if you have them, and hopefully I can answer those. Um, other than that, 
pretty much completes our study. I thank you for your time and your attention and uh, hope you hope you've been able to learn something.